Good morning, everyone. I'm in my room today. The, okay, so this is the uh, continued journey of a life of faith. Sometimes I wonder, I mean, I like to study people. This nah, that's just interesting to me. And uh, I like to ask everyone, so why do you believe? Yeah, and the answers vary. Yeah. I'd say the majority has grown up with a certain foundation of belief and they're kind of going with that and it's working for them. And then others search. I suddenly had some kind of an experience and that brought them to God. Belief in an afterlife, right? Like near-death experiences, for example. One example. Uh, since this goes on YouTube right, and people are going, what is she talking about? I found true parents. The the second coming after Jesus has already happened in the form of a man from Korea. And his name is Sun Myung Moon. And he got, as a teenager, and the ages vary. <laughs> it seems like the younger, the better. <laughs> so it depends on whose accounts you read. He's 17, 16, 15, you know, uh, maybe at one point he'll be five. Okay. <laughs> he was a young man. Uh, no doubt that uh, Jesus will have approached him at a time where Sun Myung Moon was capable of this good decision making. And has already shown in you know, his life as growing up as a child this, that that uh, he is capable right, to take over the mission of Jesus. Well, what, what what are we talking about here? Well, it shouldn't be so difficult to understand that human beings are here in the world for one thing. Huh? That is, uh, okay, living together, enjoying Earth. God's creation, but also to procreate. Well, Jesus never did that. Right? Families work together as families, love each other as families. That's one way to give back to God, right? Yes, the lonely being out in the universe or who knows where. And so, as a child growing up, in the Catholic religion was very daunting to me. And the reason it was daunting to me was because I had these spiritual, I had lived like in the spiritual world as well, which as a child, I didn't know that. I didn't know I was kind of floating between two worlds. You know, there's the reality of, of the physical realm. And then there is this spiritual realm that was also open to me. Right. And I didn't, to me, it wasn't any different. So, you know, I would talk about certain things and my mom was very good. She was also spiritually intuitive, not like me, but in a different way. So she understood it's okay. She's not crazy. She's not, you know, just let her do her thing. And so I didn't ever felt like I was weird or odd. I know that now, but <laughs> at the time as a child, right, it didn't feel that way. But as I got older, it became very confusing because I did start to realize that, uh, okay, why does this person not realize they just lied to me or they lied to the people around them or the way that they're presenting themselves isn't what I see, how they actually really feel and think within themselves. And I couldn't, I said, why would you do that? <laughs> Everybody can see that. And then I had to real and I realized that no, not everybody could see that. People were very cut off from each other when it came to that spiritual nature. And people just lived basically for themselves. And so however they want wanted to, they could present a different face on the outside in the physical than what's actually going on within them in the spiritual. 
was very confusing to me as a child. And I didn't have a mentor or anything that says, okay, all right, all right, all right. You've got some, you have a gift, you have a special talent, and there's a reason for that. Da, da, da. There was nobody there telling me that. When I questioned one time a priest about something, he says, you don't have enough faith. I'm going, huh? What does that have to do with faith? I know it's not as you say. I know that you know, my reasoning, my experiences with the spirit world are telling me something different about this particular part in the Bible, and yet you're telling I don't have enough faith, but I already know the truth. I've, I've seen the truth. I experienced the truth. And so there wasn't anyone that I felt or those like me. And it became very confusing for me. Uh, as a teenager, uh, yeah, I did. I smoked pot. I smoked marijuana. Uh, got into that crowd, um, and that was great. It was absolutely great for me. Uh, uh, smoking a joint was uh, it cut off all the spiritual anything spiritual was just cut off, and I was just a regular person. Yeah, I really liked that. I liked not con continuously always being right taught from spirit world and that's what I was I was continuously always taught from spirit world but in a way that I didn't understand it's like I was supposed to read and and do math yeah at a very early age without anyone guiding me exactly on what how that process right, is actually how that unfolds interestingly enough that I don't remember anybody teaching me how to read or do math. I just went to first grade and uh, I already knew everything. I could already, it was already all there. Whatever was on the board, I could, it, I had no problems on understanding anything. I mean, it was all already there. I don't know when I started to read, but I do know that at a very early age, uh, six, seven, eight years old, I was already reading chapter books without pictures anyway so and so on and it went on as I grew up grew out of teenage being a teenager things didn't really change except for I knew I learned how to cut off with just marijuana I never did anything else uh, uh, this part of my life that wasn't a part of most everyone around me, at least from what I knew. And it was kind of liberating. I felt like I was living my life for a change <laughs> rather than everyone else's with their thoughts, especially their lies and their deceit that I could see, feel. Right? It's very difficult. People love fireworks, right? Not me. I never loved fireworks. It was, it was, it was oh my God, it's like a punishment that I had to stand within a throng of people and, uh, and watch fireworks. And there's all this, all this stuff that went on spiritually around me because of the energy of the fireworks that was in the crowd was really enhanced. And it was just daunting to me. It's like, right, it squeezed my heart and it, it just, and I couldn't wait to get out of it. I couldn't wait. So even as a child, I liked being by myself, peace <laughs> and quiet, right? Then I uh, 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 made a trip to the U.S. and I stayed uh, and I met true parents after I was already married and had a child. Why that was that it was at that time, rather than me meeting true parents and becoming as a single person, uh, uh, an entity there in the church, in the community, in the, in, the, in the movement, and would be able to go out and fundraise and go through all this, what some people call a full member. Uh, I don't know. It was just the way, but to, that's, that was God's way for me to stay. And it's a very, it's a very interesting story. It's my story. Uh, and, uh, and, I don't think that anyone should belittle someone else's story of faith. Does it have to do within one organized religion or another? But some people, and especially in this group that I will share this to, 
they feel they have the right to do that. That's very sad. It's very sad. Thankfully, I'm, I'm uh, secure enough in my faith. I know what my path is. That that doesn't really affect me, but I have to question a person like that because what are you doing to someone who's not at the level, spiritual level that I am at? To belittle someone for the service to God, to parents, their brothers and sisters in faith, right? regardless of what religion they are in, that doesn't deserve belittling like that just because you don't like what I have to say. What I have experienced, that's not right. So when I met True Parents and went to the first three-day workshop and then a seven-day workshop and then started my service within the movement, this and that, with all kinds of different things, um, and especially reading the Divine Principle, it was like the answer to my prayers. What is my purpose with all this extra stuff in my life? I know what people don't have. It's amazing. To me, it was amazing to finally just the three day workshop to me is like, oh my gosh, this is like, I know I've lived in spirit world as well, but suddenly the doors of heaven opened. The communication became something different because though I didn't need the light bulbs to learn how to read or do math or other things here on earth, I needed the light bulb to go on right, in for me in spirit world with then the learning process what I was actually capable of within that learning process and to understand and why I, I could experience both worlds in the way that I did it was like it was manna from heaven to me incredible and it was true parents who did that. It wasn't just true father. It was true mother as well. It was amazing. It was just amazing to me. So, uh, okay, so being in a movement like that, so you think I didn't see that there was some controversy going on with the members and, the, you know, the, the continues, the continued, you know, you know yeah, you know, power and money and greed and this was there too. It didn't matter, but that's not that's not what I why I was there. I knew I was in the right place. I knew I was with the right people. I knew I was in the right movement. Yeah. To do what? To help God. To help my parent in heaven. That was that. So then now after the split, you know, years and years, I have to find, I have to go back to California. Didn't never heard anything here in Kentucky about it. I had to go back to California. I don't know how many years ago. And someone tells us, Hey, by the way, you know, right? I said, no, I don't. I said, what, what, what happened? <laughs> I'm going, what? what, what is this now? A new soap opera within the church, within our movement? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So then, did I uh, go and start to examine? I heard all the accusations right, from especially the one side, the sons who are just, and then they, you know, did this, these crazy things. You know, what? 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 What are they doing? What the heck? <laughs> Where's their head? Yeah. Where's their heart to mind? Yeah. Completely lost. Yeah. That's how I saw it. Made the effort. I went. I prepared for two years. Then I went. Ugh. I'm not gonna do this. Why am I doing this? This is not my problem. Right? Spirit well said, Yeah, well, it is your problem. It is everybody's problem. So I did. This was amazing how that came together. I wasn't gonna go make that 14 hour trip to Pennsylvania to see these sons I couldn't care less about. Really, when it comes down to it, they're not my kids. And uh and then I needed, in order for me to actually go see my family in Switzerland, I needed a passport. Well, in order to get the passport at that time, I had to drive all the way to Washington, D.C. Ugh, what? <sighs> to me, it was amazing on how Spirit World just said, we're going to get her where we need her to go because... <laughs> so I thought, well, and I had a friend who was willing to go with me. 
we went and I said, okay, well, if we're going that far, we might as well go that far. And my two-year prep, which was a blanket that I made, uh, a quilt blanket for every child of true parents, true parents, and Jesus, and all of the ones that had passed away as well. And, um, and, and, and I added an herb that went with each child and true parents and my brother Jesus as well. And then I had to, I, okay, so I had these gazillion blankets with me. <laughs> was that 17 of them or something? I think it was 17 and went up there. Yeah, first to Washington DC, everything went great there. For some reason, I missed that one brother in Maryland, which I thought was in Washington, D.C. We went to the church there. It was sad to see in what kind of disrepair that church was in, especially on the outside. Uh, but beautiful, beautiful building, you know. And I don't know, sheesh, you know, this is just like, eh. <laughs> I wanted to stay there and fix up the outside real nice, you know, with some flowers or, gosh, grow vegetables you know but to just see it so drab you know I didn't like that I didn't like that but anyway it wasn't well, just looked and gone yeah okay kept on going got there and that was interesting on how the blankets were delivered whereas a, a sister up there um, that I stayed with the family I stayed with ended up staying with um, she said, oh, but we can't. And we were only about a mile away right, from Hyung Jinim's house. Oh, you can't. I had I said, let's just go. I said, what are you afraid of? I said, come to live. you're afraid of him? You can't go there? Why not? Oh, well, he's the king. Just the, You know, true father, son, going, so what? He's a human being, isn't he? He should have more compassion. This is for especially look i'm not i didn't come up here now to, to to stop because of you're scared let's go so we did yeah ended up being well, okay yeah. uh i wasn't impressed with uh okay i'm not gonna go there it doesn't matter but i delivered the blankets after that my work was done and i told young Jinim's wife i said hey this is yeah, an offering uh i hope it'll Maybe it'll do some good. Yeah. yeah, they might have all ended up on a pile, maybe a big bonfire. I don't know. I have no idea. Yet I did. I did. I went. And I saw. And I always feel that any experience that I have anywhere with anyone is always to teach them, to give, right? to see. Oh, I see. This is how it is. I think to just talk about people without having some give and take with them, at least some give and take with them, to know them per have been within a couple of feet of a person where I pick up any of everything. If I want to, I can pick up everything. And then, uh, oh, okay, so I had this experience specifically. I think it's important. I've learned to never, ever just follow someone talking, saying certain things, especially when it is about others, um, without having had some personal experience myself. Or be very cautious on how, until I have done deeper study of it, be very cautious on how I respond, react, I say reflect before you react. That's why my comments sometimes don't come right away right? because I don't want to do that. That's then I'm I'm reacting. I'm re re reacting just to something rather than okay, take a step back. How does this? How do, what does the person really mean that? And then if there is a need for a response, give that. Often it's not even me, it's their world trying to talk to them through their ancestors. This, that, it's, yeah, I know, I, yeah, that's just me, <laughs> okay? In any case, I went home, it was sad. I went home and I was very, very sad. I remember how excited I was, ended up getting huh, to go and do that. And then uh, when I left 
how sad I was. I was really, really sad. I was very sad. Realizing how detrimental that break, that rift in our true family actually is. Very sad. So, will I ever regard true mother as something else than true mother? The mother, the wife of the one that Jesus asked to fulfill the mission, to start the family, to give the blessing, to reestablish eh, the people of Israel. Fourth Israel, fifth Israel, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, God's people. Right? Christianity isn't enough. Again, because Jesus didn't have a wife, didn't have a family, right? Didn't have children. Then to continue on this uh, superb lineage. Oh, so that Korean dude is it. Well, I'm telling you what, it is worth it to read the divine principle. It is worth it. Yeah to kind of look into the story of uh, this man, Sun Myung Moon, and then his wife, Hak Jahan Moon, and uh, what they've done together. It's pretty amazing. So has Spirit World ever, no, it's, I've never found, has, the Spirit World's always directed me with first towards true parents and then with true parents all the way. I'm not going to change. I found through this couple a the purpose in my life per se where then I understood what was going on with me and then the journey just it was like a closed bud of a flower that was there it was beautiful it didn't wither it was kept right watered and 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 just someone something was waiting for it to start blooming. I met true parents and I started to bloom and started to learn. It was beautiful. Now I'm in full bloom. Absolutely in full bloom. Yes. Oh, so I'm perfect. This net. Yeah, I'm still working on some things, but I'm getting there. <laughs> the difference in my family, the restoration that has been possible in my family. It's amazing. Uh, one, if, would, when, if one w were to know everything, I'd say, well, but, you know, but that's the thing is, is that you only see from the outside okay, what's on the outside. I know, having lived my life, all my life, being me, with the people around me, having okay, raised a family, children, now grandchildren, have grandchildren, I see okay, what's going on in my extended family and one could say yeah but but the thing is is i see deeper than that i see where restoration is taking place and it's not going to happen over just the last 40 or 50 years it's going to take time but as long as it is every little step right, is towards our father's our parent in heaven's heart then that's that's um, that's amazing and that's great and that in my family I see that so now because right, some people are unhappy with true mother right, and oh but she said this and said that and I don't know if true father said a lot of things too I had to say oh wait a second <laughs> yeah. I can't, I will never abandon true parents. I will never. I owe them way too much. I have found nothing in true mother's words that isn't still a part of the restoring Eve and then the restoring true parents. The union between Adam and Eve in the beginning. It's still going on, yeah. And true mother hasn't failed. Not not at all. Not at all. So uh, if I know people can't see it, 
I see true father and true mother and true mother and true father. And uh, together, they're the perfect harmony. They really are. So that's my journey with that. And it doesn't matter what anyone has to say about it. it that will never change for me. I will never, never will I abandon true parents. Never will I abandon true mother. Never, ever will I become a traitor to the people that have saved basically my life. Got me to bloom, understand. Yeah? And it's to this day, it's still. Yeah? I can read the divine principle again and I'm going, oh, oh, I didn't get this before. Oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> and it's always so that I then can help others. It's always so that, uh, oh, so is that, I'm not out there teaching crowds and this and that, I'm not. Oh God, just every so often will send a person very important to the restoration plan. And uh, valuable, very valuable. Every person is valuable. Uh, but some people are a little farther and they're on their path uh, in that uh, to save humanity. Of course. It's always about that, right? to save humanity. Who doesn't want to save every child out there that's abandoned, being abused physically, sexually, psychologically, doesn't have a home, sleeps under a bridge, right? under the age of 10 or something, trying to survive. Vultures, human ones. Right? Who, who doesn't want that? So, of course, it's always about saving humanity and of course that should start with the children always always so one person could come my way and we have this conversation which then the person suddenly goes oh oh my gosh i just the light bulb just came on right yes and then they become very, even more so valuable right? to continue God's work. Yeah. Sadly, that's necessary now due to the fact that Adam and Eve did fall in the Garden of Eden. Yeah. yeah and then it just went on and on and on. Look what's still going on, right? Yeah. In the world, right? We just can't be without war. Yeah. Whose fault is that? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Had my saying, <laughs> one comment, who I make responsible for that. But yeah, there it is. So, <sighs> why even be on a site like this? Number one, I have no idea how I got into it. Somehow, I <laughs> so I don't uh, uh, disregard. Um, my place here till I guess I get expelled, <laughs> excommunicated, <laughs> wouldn't be the first time. And, uh, I'm not here to argue over who's right and wrong. It's, uh, I don't think anyone has the right to persecute and judge true mother. Nobody, absolutely nobody. If you like what you're doing now with the sons, Hyun Janim and Kuk Janim, then, uh, yeah, then you do that. Yeah. But as far as um, continuously uh, debating and in a way you try to uh, defend your stance right, on what, why you're doing what you're doing and you have to attack another person over it and make totally just slander them and for no apparent reason. True mother is a good woman, a very good woman, a true woman. And what are you doing? What are you actually doing? Is it that you feel better when you, when you do that to true mother, you feel better? Is that it? You sleep better? You don't have to look at your own actions and what you actually are supporting and what you're following? 
Okay. Well. Yeah. So, yes, I did see the sermon as well where uh, uh, Hyunjin was talking about feelings right? and how wrong they are and how they should not be, you shouldn't have any feelings. You, know, you should base everything on this or that. So really, yeah, you'd be in big trouble. Right? Everyone were to do that. True father would be in big trouble. It is a lot about feelings, because how else would you experience spirit world without feeling? Okay. Just saying, right? Yes. Yeah. So there it is. Uh, someday, there's always hope. There's a reason we have why we have the word hope, right? Faith. Uh, just like to mention, yeah, I saw also, yeah, the <laughs> sermons where <laughs> the healing thing was happening and that's all about feelings as well. Yes, he gave that up because he realized it's not working. <laughs> it's okay. Hey, we're all entitled to try whatever we think we're capable of, right? Yes? <laughs> Eventually, we're in the groove. Oh, those are my capabilities. That's what I am really good at. Right? Yes? Yeah. It's not being out in the wilderness either, by the way. That, those, those videos are pretty funny to me because I live in the wilderness and have for many years. Yes, of course, in a nice house to snap it yeah, with uh, wood heat. Yeah water that comes from a spring eh? not hooked up to whatever and uh spent plenty of time out in the wild eh? and i didn't have all them gizmos that you know, some people can afford i did just fine too anyway so yeah that's interesting he's learning i was hoping he'd kind of learn young i was hoping in the wilderness he would learn right something I was hoping that he would truly find his way to the heart of God. I was really hoping. I can still hope, right? Yes? Okay. Well, that's all I wanted to share. So, uh, I can't, I can't see things as a rift. I see, uh, even though that's what it is, uh, Families break apart sometimes. It happens. I think that it should encourage all of us to give the people the time that they need. I'm good. And if they if those boys need that time away and uh, or forever and do their thing, that's fine. But I don't understand why they uh, persecute and judge their mother the way they do. I have never experienced that from anyone ever in my entire The family pledge has a part in it yeah? about filial piety. Mm. Seven points, eight points. Yeah. Ten commandments, the Lord's Prayer, and the family pledge. Don't need a whole lot more than that, really. Yeah? Yes? And uh, yeah, we can make excuses, try to. Yeah? You know, I can I can figure out a way around all this. <laughs> sure you can. You can do anything you want here on earth. Free will. Absolute freedom of will you got here. Yeah. So, anyway, that's what I wanted to share. Huh? God's love and blessings always. Beware. Do what you want to do. Go ahead, do what you want to do. But please don't. Do not slander true mother. Please don't do that. Please don't. Am I saying that for myself? No, no. I worry about you. <laughs> okay? God's love and blessings always. And I will talk to you all another time.